Dr. Bruce Ransom, the Magnuson Professor and Chair of the Department of Neurology at the University of Washington, discusses muscular dystrophy in the research to prevent and treat these diseases with Dr. Jeff Chamberlain, McCall Professor of Neurology also at the University of Washington. Muscular dystrophy tragically affects the muscles and the lives of many young patients, robbing them of their mobility, their opportunities for work and play, and ultimately, their lives. What is muscular dystrophy? How common is it? Well, the muscular dystrophies are a group of genetic disorders, so they're caused by a defect in any one of a variety of genes that are very important for the normal functioning of muscle cells. They're fairly common in terms of genetic diseases, but they're not tremendously common in terms of overall illness uh, in the world. There are probably about one in 2,000 individuals will have a form of muscular dystrophy. How does it affect patients? Well, it depends on which type of muscular dystrophy one has. The more severe types of muscular dystrophy can be fatal, sometimes as early as the first year of life and in a very severe form. Other forms come on later in life and are more slowly progressive. In general, though, the way the muscular dystrophies work is they affect your muscles and they cause a breakdown of muscle function and an increasing weakness throughout life. Uh, that can lead, uh, in the case of the limb muscles, to a loss of mobility, but more importantly, it can lead to weaknesses of the breathing muscle and the heart, and that's typically what leads to death. Some types of muscular dystrophy are X-linked. How does that work? Muscular dysphys are caused, again, by a defect in a gene that's important for the function of muscle. And if that gene is located on the X chromosome, it affects how the disease can be inherited. Uh, females have two copies of the X chromosome, but males only have one. So if you have a defect in a gene on the X chromosome and you're a male, then that gene is completely disabled and it does not work. If females have a defect in a gene on the X chromosome, they still have a second copy of that gene on the other X chromosome, and so they typically will not get the disease. What happens as a result is that with an X-linked disease, females can be carriers of that disease and pass it on to their male offspring. But if a male child gets that gene, uh, he will develop the disease. Ordinary therapies are not usually effective in genetic diseases. But we are living at a time when the human genome is an open book, and we are rapidly discovering ways to detect gene defects that cause disease and ways of repairing our own DNA.